Katsuin Meladrin, the legendary Aes Sedai, managed to rescue Randall Thor in Farmating, where he fell prisoner after finishing off the Ashaman that had betrayed and tried to murder him. As a consequence of this, Rand finally apologizes for his behavior towards her, and she finally agrees to be his advisor. Gathering the Aes Sedai sworn to him, as well as a few trustworthy Ashaman and a Windfinder from the Seafolk, Rand leads the group away from Farmating. Near the road, not far from the city, he unearths Kalandor from where he hid it, and proclaims that his next step is to cleanse Saedin from the Dark One's taint, once and for all. To that end, he plans to use the access keys he found in Roydian, two little statuettes shaped in the likeness of the Chodan Kull, two gigantic statues that have been mentioned all along since the beginning of the series, and that happen to be the most powerful Sa Angriel ever made. Those access keys are in fact Terangriel that allow the user to tap safely into the Chodan Call. Thus, Rand opens a gateway for the whole group to travel to Shadar Logoth, where he and Nynaeve, linked together, are to tap into the male and female Chodan Call, respectively, creating a conduit made of Saidar, through which Saidin will flow into the city, dragging away the taint to clash with Mashadar, the cursed city's own evil force. Landing on a hilltop a few miles to the north of the ruins of the city, Rand and Nynaeve take seat and begin tunneling inconceivable amounts of the One Power. As soon as the tunneling begins, the Forsaken show up, for they already knew the Dragon Reborn's plan, and were just waiting for Rand to begin, to learn the precise place he would choose. But Katsuane, in charge of the defense, is not considered a legendary Aes Sedai for naught, Aware that Rand and Nynaeve would be vulnerable whilst channeling, she had already deployed the defending forces as follows. The Aes Sedai linked together with the Ashaman in four circles. The first one composed of Elsa and Marissa Sedai from the Green Aja with Jahar Narishma, the strongest of the Ashaman here, holding Kalandor. They are charged with patrolling the hilltop in circles, guarding Rand and Nynaeve's back. The second, composed of Sarin Sedai from the White Aja and Corel from the Yellow, along Jamer Flynn. They are the vanguard, facing Shadar Logoth to the south. Another circle brings the rear guard to the north, formed by Nisuna Sedai from the Brown Aja, Beldin from the Green, and Daijian from the White, with young Eben Hopwheel as their Ashaman companion. And the last, covering the western flank, composed of Verin and Kumira Sedai from the Brown Aja, and Shalon, Windfinder of the Seafolk. The east is guarded by Olivia, the former Damani from Shonchan, who stands alone, yet not helpless, since she is immensely powerful, more so than Nynaeve or even many of the Forsaken. Besides, she holds many angry elf for aid. Farther away, Arian Sedai from the Green is in charge of guarding the warders and men, since they cannot channel. And last, but not least, Katswain herself stands beside Rand and Nynaeve on the hilltop, creating a shield made of Saidar to protect them from airborne attacks, which proves to be wise since, as soon as the Forsaken arrive, the battle ensues, and the first attack is directed straight at Katswain, with lightning hitting the Saidar shield above their heads. Katswain's Terangriel locates the direction of the attack, so she is able to point to the attacker for Elsa circle to counterattack. To north and south they strike, where Sindan and Demandred opened their gateways. Through her point of view, we learn Sindan is in fact Lanfear in a new body, given to her by the Dark One. She quickly steps into another gateway to avoid the counterattacks and moves east. The Mandred, who started inside the city, swiftly moves out and starts north, trying to reach Rand. But before long, he stumbles into Damer's group, who takes him by surprise, since the Forsaken didn't expect the old man to be an Ashaman. After fending off the attacks, the Mandred pulls back. Meanwhile, to the east, Osangar moves cautiously towards Rand. He was the Forsaken Aginor, before the Dark One gave him a new body. And now, we find out, he's been masquerading all this time as the Ashaman the Shiva. In the western front, Varen spots Grendel coming straight to her group and tries to shield her, but to no avail, since the Forsaken is too strong. A heavy crossfire ensues until they are able to drive Grendel away, though, sadly, 
Gumira falls dead, prey to the Forsaken. To the north, Arangar tries to deceive Daiji and Circle, but since she tunnels Saedin instead of Saedar, Evan Hopewell is able to detect her and throws himself at her to protect Daijian, the Aes Sedai who bonded him as her warder. He succeeds, enabling the sisters to chase Arangar away, but at the highest cost, dying in the process. Meanwhile, to the east, the fiercest encounter takes place. Sindan arrives to the foot of Rand's Hill, but finds it guarded by Olivia. Underestimating her, she casts a fireball towards the Shonchan woman, but a Tyrangriel in her possession breaks it before it can reach her. Angered, she fights back, frightening Sindan with her sheer strength in the power. Finally, Olivia succeeds in routing Sindan, but not unharmed since the Forsaken managed to hit Olivia, searing one of her arms to the bone. Far to the north, Mogirian watches how the battle unfolds. Coward as she is, she came only not to disobey Moradin, but judging that the man won't be able to know how much she interferes on in the fight, she stays safely away, noticing how a great shadow lies where the city of Shara Logoth should be. After many hours tunneling, Katsuin checks on Rand, who isn't moving, and Nynaeve, who seems to be weak, so she heals her. Concurrently, Osangar finally reaches the top of the hill. Hidden, he spies on Rand and also Narishima, who's still holding Kalandor. Thinking of being named Nabliss for killing Althor and coveting the crystal sword for himself, he begins to weave Balefire to kill them both. But on that instant, he is spotted by Elsa Sedai, who was patrolling the area, and through the link, she draws power from Kalandor, casting a huge fireball that vaporizes Osangar. Later still, deep into the afternoon, Magirian risks getting closer to the battlefield, since she realizes the battle must be over, for she can feel no more violent channeling. She can now see that the shadow over the city turned into a huge dome of black fire. As she watches, the dome collapses on itself and implodes, making the wind rush to fill the void, and blowing Magirian away with it. After the explosion, a huge crater occupies the space, where Shadow Logoth used to be. The Warders and Min reunite with Rand and Nynaeve, who are unconscious from the terrible effort. Katswain examines the female access key, which is now melted and broken, while she ponders on the result of the battle. They suffered two casualties, Eben and Kumira, an Ashaman and an Aes Sedai, against one forsaken dead. Daimer Flynn heals the wounded and, along Narishma, they both claim that now they can feel Saedin clean. Katswain still wonders to what extent the taint has been wiped out and prays for Rand to recover, since he still has to meet his greatest duty, to face the Darwin himself at the last battle. Tarman Gaidon draws near. I'm preparing more Wheel of Time videos, so if you like these kinds of content, please consider subscribing and give a like, it helps a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.